Hi everybody, I wanted to present uh, this case, which is my first robotic tar on a 62-year-old femur with a BMI of 37, with history of a midline laparotomy for a uterine cancer. That resulted during her adjuvancy in a ventral hernia that had a small gap of fascia and was constituted of two defects that altogether measured 14 by 20 centimeters. We did a preoperative Botox uh, guided with ultrasound four weeks prior to the surgery, and we scheduled her for a robotic uh, transversus abdominus muscle release. Surgery started um, fairly uh, doable with uh, uh, an important amount of adhesions, but all of them were very loose and uh, allowed for dissection. As many of the professors point out during their surgeries, uh, I tried to grasp the adhesions and the fibrotic tissue around the bowel and not the bowel itself to prevent injuries. And here we are exposing how we are able to dissect the sac away from the bowel, making the sac go inside of the defect and reducing the bowel inside of the abdominal cavity so we can later expose the defects and the anatomy that will later be key to find the retrorectus space. Being this my my uh, second case, second robotic case ever, and uh, my first robotic tar, I had a, a wonderful proctor, Dr. Javier Curi, and Dr. Francisco Galeana from Mexico City, come and, and direct me uh, during the procedure. So here we're being able to finally dissect some of the adhesions. This is the gap that I was telling you about uh, that divided the two defects, but provided uh, no strength whatsoever to the abdominal wall. Therefore, only uh, I took uh, the defect as if it was one. speed of the video by the way it's 4x uh, i didn't want to bore you with a with a too long uh, video nor uh, with the careful uh, slow dissection that i did in the beginning so we're finally in the subsiphoid region i started my incision on the round ligament of the 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 liver in order to get into the preperitoneal space. And once we've achieved that, we are going to find the posterior rectus sheath and make an incision on it, following the rectus, trying to develop the space that will later uh, allow us to get access into the transversus plane. Really during, uh, during the procedure, uh, I had in my mind the, the, all the videos and, and the comments that I have heard from professors like Dr. Conrad Balliser, Dr. Igor, Igor Velianski, uh, Dr. Professor uh, Moisoms, uh, and, and really the IHC and all the videos and the posts that we get from, from all of you guys uh, really made a big difference for me in this uh, being my first case. This is my first robotic case, but I've done this uh, uh, in the laparoscopic way and of course in, in the open fashion. And I think having done open and laparoscopic TAR really, really gave me a, a good advantage in terms of knowing the anatomy and knowing what I was going to be facing during the procedure. So here we're finally getting to the bottom of the second defect. There my assistant is pointing out where the, the suprapubic region is. And we're getting access to the retius space. And finally doing the crossover to the right rectorectus space, which I'm going to stop right there. So I go back to the subsiphoid on the, on the left side. I dissect a little bit more. And then once I locate my transversus abdominus muscle, I make an incision on the posterior lamella and try to stay close to the, to the insertion of the transversus abdominus so I can reduce the bleeding to a minimum. This was great advice given by Dr. Javier Curi during the procedure. 
And then as the space starts to become a little more evident, I am able to, to dissect and, and feel more comfortable. But of course, I had a few uh, peritoneal incidentals. So as I carry on with the, with the procedure, I get to the part of the transversus where the uh, muscle fibers are a little thicker. So uh, it becomes a, a more bloody and a little more difficult to, to see the plane, but it was very important to just remain calm and, and try to follow the, my proctor's directions. And then I remember something that I hear on Dr. Conrad Balliser's videos all the time, that you should find fat, fat is your friend. And once you, you've done that, you have to dig a cave, go lateral and come back medial in order to get access to that uh, wonderful preperitoneal plane. I got a little confused between the pretransversalis and the preperitoneal plane, uh, and it was difficult to to stay above the transvers transversalis fascia. Um, but I guess it's uh, something that can be expected. There's actually the the moment where the transversalis fascia stays uh, with the transversus and the transversus muscle is naked to the right uh, being on top of the arcuate line and below the arcuate line we're going to find that the transversalis fascia is uh, adhered to the transversus and we're only going to have a thick layer of peri peritoneum on the on the bottom I had to keep coming back to places where I had already done my dissection because I, I didn't go deep enough to make my transversus lay nice and flat on top of the viscera. But as the case progressed, I was able to release the transversus and get access to the red cyst space. And finally, finish the, the release on the right side. So as we're getting ready to uh, do the second docking, I, I tried to be very efficient and not have to uh, redock once they, I, I docked the patient on the other side. So I asked my assistant to point where the foot region was. So I made sure I had a, an overlap long enough for the mesh. I made sure that the peritoneum was nice and flat on top of the viscera. And then I got out of the console and prep the mesh, not before I measure the space, so I could select the mesh uh, with the adequate length and width to reinforce my, my closure. I insert the, the trocar on the contralateral side, and then the mesh was uh, brought inside the abdominal cavity using the the rolling trick that Dr. Belleser uh, shows on his videos uh, that really makes it very easy and, and in terms of uh, placing the mesh inside of the abdominal cavity and then uh, unrolling it so it lays uh, nice and flat. So at this point, we redock the robot, go to the contralateral side, and this time I wanted to start my, di my dissection. Since I am a, a right-handed surgeon, I felt more comfortable uh, going from uh, bottom bottoms up. 
So I had to find the plane that I had already uh, developed when I was doing my crossover on the, on, on the other side and just get in the, uh, uh, on top of the transversalis fascia in the retrorectus space and continue developing from then on. I observed that uh, a common mistake that I had is that I lost uh, the center of my dissection. I could see it on, on, on the console, but it, it, it couldn't be seen on the, on the screens. I guess that's something that I have to work on and, and try to improve for my next cases. So we have dissected the retrorectal space on the lower defect. Then we get to that gap of fascia and get access to the bigger defect that is on the supraumbilical and succiphoid uh, region. During the procedure, I had Dr. Francisco Galeana uh, be my, my uh, card, uh, uh, patient's card uh, surgeon. And he was just great in directing everything in the, in the, in the patient's card. And uh, I mean, without him, uh, things wouldn't have not, would have not flow as nicely as they did. So there I finally connect the dots between the, the crossover that I had made in the subsidefoot region with the dissection of the posterior rectus sheath. And we are going to start the tar on the left side. As I say, I am a right-handed surgeon, so it felt more uh, comfortable for me going this time in a bottoms up. And this is also the way that I find it more comfortable and, and more precise when I do it in, in laparoscopy. So uh, we, we started the, the tar on this side. Again, uh, words of professors in the IHC coming to my mind, go lateral, come back medial, dig a hole, dig a cave, I'm sorry. And then uh, it just uh, progressed uh, from there. And once I reached a point in which uh, I didn't feel comfortable uh, advancing, because uh, I, I started making a few holes in the, in the peritoneum, I went to the to the other side to start the tar uh, top to bottom and then connect the dots. If I had to choose, uh, I probably would have not choose a, uh, a tar to be my, my second case on, on robotics, but there isn't a, a lot of chances here to to find patients for robotic surgery. So I, I really had to uh, try to tackle this and, and, and be very well coached by Dr. Javier Curi. So there I'm continuing the tar, bottoms up. I'm connecting the dots between the dissection top to bottom. And these last muscle fibers are going to be released that will finally allow me to release the transversus and do the dissection so my posterior flat is laying uh, comfortably on top of the viscera. And we're just about done on this side and getting ready to do the closure of the posterior rectus sheath on the center. Because of how bloody my, my operative field uh, got, it was a little uh, difficult to, to see the plane. But I guess it's, uh, it can be normal on the first few cases. And we're finally here doing some uh, uh, last uh, dissection in the subsidefoot region to make sure everything is laying nice and flat. And we start the closure of the posterior rectus sheet. This is a number two uh, 2 VLOC suture, 45 centimeters. 
and we closed it in the same fashion that I see uh, very talently uh, other doctors do in the IHC. Dr. Falavio Melcher, Dr. Uh, Roxon Liu, also very skilled, very meticulous, uh, very, uh, very great surgeries to learn from. The type of mesh that I uh, used for this uh, first case was a Medtronic Symbotex 35 by 25 centimeters. I did not feel comfortable using an uncoated mesh uh, just because of the amount of uh, peritoneal incidentals I had and, and I didn't want to risk the bowel being exposed to an uncoated mesh and then having uh, the, the results of my surgery being compromised. I guess w when I gain a little bit more confidence and, and uh, I decrease the amount of uh, peritoneal incidentals, I will feel comfortable using an uncoated mesh. And here we're just about to get to the lower edge of the defect finally being closed. So finally we got to the other very challenging part of the surgery that I, I was very hesitant on doing uh, with the robot because of the I didn't know if I was going to be able to close the, the, the fascia, so I started on the upper uh, vertex of the, of the hernia. And my plan was to make a few throws and tighten slowly and see if the defect came together, which uh, luckily for everybody in the OR who were already very tired, <laughs> worked out very good. While I was doing this uh, part of the surgery and I was thinking on of uh, when I do these procedures in, in, in laparoscopy, uh, it, it really makes a difference the, the articulation that you can do with the hands uh, when you're doing it robotically. I think there is no contest that the robot is much better to do uh, any complex hernia repair um, than, than laparoscopy. But I do think that laparoscopy should be uh, in your skill set and also it should be a, a very important part of the learning curve because uh, it's a better way to understand the anatomy and uh, you appreciate this uh, instrument, which is the, the robot, a lot better once you have uh, tried or, or done these uh, procedures in laparoscopy. There I'm just doing my final throws and making sure the, the suture is nice and locked. And I start uh, in the bottom of the, of the other uh, defect. Using basically the, the same technique that I applied on the, on the other side. taking small bites of the peritoneal sac and having my assistant tell me uh, if I didn't grasp uh, the skin while I was doing the, the throw of the, of the suture was very important um, to prevent any injuries to the skin and also to, to help the sac uh, contract and prevent further seromas. And as we progressed, we're finally getting almost to the end of the surgery. I, I closed the, the defect and then came back on the same line of suture just to make sure that it didn't uh, got loose.
always double checking that the the line of closure is nice and tight and that there are no gaps and no loose areas where where a further hernia can be developed and while you see this i also want to make a a, a comment about dr luis alfonso martin del campo who was my assistant during this uh, first procedure he he's a wonderful surgeon he has lots of experience in robotic surgery and he's also a, a very important part of a uh, this uh, being being able to happen and then uh, the last part was to close the defect that was uh, on the suprapubic region once the bigger defect came together uh, this was a lot easier to to close I think uh, this is an example of how the IHC community contributes to the learning uh, of surgeons uh, in other places of the world because this wasn't only my, my second uh, robotic procedure but it's also uh, the first time I was inside of an operating theater while ATAR was being uh, performed and you guys are so thorough with your explanations and, and, and so uh, great in giving all your tips and tricks that uh, really allow our cur our learning curves to to happen swiftly And here uh, we're finally on scrolling the mesh inside of the abdominal cavity I heard dr. Conrad Balliser say over and over again that this is one of the most gratifying moments of the surgery and I couldn't agree more just uh, seeing how that mesh lays flat on the on the posterior layer that you just closed it's it's just wonderful and that's when you get the the feeling that things are finally getting together so i uh, removed myself from the console and my assistants were uh, gracious enough to place uh, two drains And this is a, a video of the patient before the surgery. There you can see both of the hernias protruding. And this is post-operative day one. I'm asking the patient to, to do a, a setup and to cough. And, and I was very happy to see that the, the hernia was very well contained. This is her and I on post-operative day one. And now this is us on day two. She's already ambulatory and she was discharged from the hospital on post-operative day three. Thank you all very much for watching and uh, please I, I will appreciate very much your criticism so I can improve. Thank you.